So welcome to Spatial Analysis 101. We're going to take you back to the root of GIS, spatial analysis and better decision making. We're going to do this by stepping through some scenarios, first using some of those basic analysis tools that are in that core GIS toolbox that we all have and use. And we're going to work our way up to some more sophisticated and advanced problems, and we'll look at the tools used to, to work on those, those uh, scenarios. So I remember back when I was at that public agency, one of my roles there was to fulfill map requests, both from internal staff and from other agencies. So I would gather information as needed, make those maps, get the project done, and everyone would go away happy. But now as I look back, I realize I really missed a lot of great opportunities there to help people learn more about GIS and make better decisions. Hey, I can one-up you on that, Tim, because I actually used to work for a city prior to coming here as well. And we had a digital submission form that people could electronically check on the layers that they wanted in a map and tell me the extent and the size, like ANSI E or ANSI D. And I was pretty proud of myself. I could bang one of those out quickly. I'd be using templates, layer files, and everything. And I know I missed opportunities to help someone make a better decision because all I was doing was creating a map. In fact, I worked quite closely with the public works department in their storm drain system. And one time, I was asked to make a map that included storm drains, project areas, and drainage areas. And I did that. Well, what I found out later, <laughs> after I talked to the people, <laughs> they were using that map to make a decision. They were trying to figure out where to place BMPs, or best management practices. These are such things as filters inside of storm drains or grassy swells to allow runoff to go there instead of the creeks, because we're trying to reduce pollution. So instead of taking the time to ask them a question, I gave them a map, they made a decision, and I could have helped them make a better decision. So what I want to show you now is a scenario of understanding this impervious surface or the amount of runoff in areas so that we can allocate resources for these best management practices in the correct place at the correct time. So when we're looking at runoff, one of the first things to think about and to consider is land use type. Now, in the planning world, there are particular impervious coverage surfaces. And again, impervious surfaces are like concrete, building footprints. You know, water can't percolate through them. So there are some general numbers associated with different types of land use. For example, commercial land use is considered to be 85% impervious because there's a lot of concrete around there. But if you look at this low density residential area, you'll see it's only 30% impervious because there's backyards and front yards and grass. So this is good general data, but with GIS we can get more specific. So here in my ArcMap document, what you're seeing is that exact same information color-coded the same. So the red areas in the land use equal commercial. You see the um, yellow areas equal the low residential. But we have better information. In fact, we have some impervious surface information. So what we have are curbs, parking lots, driveways, roads, sidewalks, and even building footprints. And all this information is very detailed. And this is 100% impervious. It's all concrete. So what I want to do is use this detailed information to come up with a strategic plan on where to put these best management practices. So let's begin with that. And it's going to start with some basic spatial analysis tools. So for our impervious surface information, we have many different feature classes as you see. What I want to do is to combine them into one feature class. Now to do that, I'm going to use the merge tool. So in the geoprocessing menu, there are some of the most commonly used GIS spatial analysis tools right here. And the merge tool is one of them. So with this tool, I'm going to simply select the layers that I would like to merge. And I'll hold down the shift key, grab them all, and just drag and drop them directly into the, cool, or into the tool. It's a cool little shortcut that I like to use. So I'm going to call this merged impervious surface. And then just hit OK. So I'm taking all these different layers, combining them into one brand new layer. And there it is right there. And remember, 
this layer is all impervious. It's all concrete, so water can't percolate through it. The next thing I want to do is actually remove this new layer from that land use that you see. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the erase tool. To find the erase tool, I use the search. I used to know all the tools inside of Arc Toolbox, but there's so many now, I can't remember. So I'm just going to search on them. And here we can see the erase tools right here. So what I'm going to do is use that merged impervious surface. And I'm sorry, I'm going to use my land use and erase out of that my merged impervious surfaces. And I'm going to call this erased. So we've created a brand new layer that has erased out all that impervious surface. And remember, the impervious surface is all the concrete areas. Let me adjust the symbology on here because I want to show you something I find really interesting. If I zoom in to this area right here. Here's, here's the deal. You're looking at a storage shed right here, another storage shed with a small driveway right here, and even some landscaped area. This is a patio that had been built. Obviously, that detailed information has not been captured inside of our GIS information. So how do we account for that? How do we add in these areas that we just may not have? Well, what I'm going to do is calculate all this purple area to have a 3% impervious ratio. Now, I didn't just grab that number out of anywhere. I actually talked to many people who work in both planning and public works to understand that that's a typical number that they use for this variance. So I'm going to open up the attribute tables on this impervious surface. Because remember, right now we're talking about this purple area having 85% impervious and this one having 5%. I'm going to use the field calculator. And I'm going to calculate all of these to 3%, just to account for those things like storage sheds and so forth. So now that I have this information, I want to combine both my erased information and my merged information, the, both of these layers into a brand new single layer. And to do that, I'm going to use the append tool. Once again, I'm going to search for it. And just click on it to open up that tool. So I'm going to append these two layers together. So I'm going to append that merged impervious surface into my erased impervious surface. And here's a little tip. I'm going to set this schema to no test. That's because both of these layers have different schemas, but I still want to combine them. So I'm just going to add up all the act or add all the fields. So I'm going to create a brand new layer that has all the information I need. And here you can see that layer. It now has the impervious surfaces, such as the building footprints, as well as this other area. The next thing I would like to do is intersect this with drainage boundaries, because I want to look at these drainage areas and see how much impervious surfaces are inside of them. So under the geoprocessing menu is the intersect tool. And I'm going to intersect my brand new layer. And I'm going to intersect my storm drain boundaries. And I'll call this one intersect layers and hit OK. So I have storm drain boundaries and I have all these individual parcels. I'm intersecting them to know which layers or which parcels are in each storm drain boundary. And now we'll open up the attributes table and look at a couple of these attributes because things have changed. So we had large polygons and I've now split them many, many times. So we have a field on here called acres. Well, here's the problem. This isn't an automatically updated field. This was manually put in, but they're different now. So how do we fix that? Well, by right-clicking on this field, we can use the Calculate Geometry tool 
to recalculate the amount of acres in each one of these smaller areas. So I would like to calculus, calculate this in acres of U.S. acres and then hit OK. And you'll notice these values have now been completely updated. You'll also remember we updated the impervious ratio information in the beginning. Well, that means our actual total acres of impervious surface is different because we've changed the acres. So what I'll do is use the field calculator this time, and I'll calculate the total number of acres multiplied by the total impervious coverage ratio, and that will give me new information about how much area in each one of these small polygons have impervious surface. And you can see how detailed some of these are. They're very small amount of impervious surface. So once I've done that, I'll use my final tool, which is the dissolve tool, and dissolve all these small parcels into bigger ones based upon the storm drainage areas. So I'm going to dissolve my intersect by the storm drainage ID. And here's a really nice tip for you guys. When you do a dissolve, you can actually add fields or add values together. So what I want to do is add up all the acres inside of these drainage areas. And I want to add up all the impervious acres inside of these drainage areas. And I'll hit OK. So I'm dissolving all these small polygons up into big polygons. And I'll hold down my Alt key and show you what that looks like. So here are the new areas that have total impervious information on them. Let's go ahead and, and do a little bit more analysis. I'm going to open up the attribute tables for this layer. I'm going to create a new field, call this percent impervious, make it a double, hit OK. And our final step is to calculate a percentage ratio. To do that, I'll once again use the field calculator, where I am going to divide the total number of impervious acres divided by the total acres. So now I know for every single one of these large areas on the map, the total percent impervious. The final step that we need to do is just to thematically map this based upon a category, the quantities of percent impervious. I'll flip the symbology so that red means there's more impervious surface or more concrete, it leads to runoff. And there we go. So what we can see here is the areas in red are the areas that have the most amount of impervious surface, which means the most amount of runoff. So what we can do from here is we can look at our storm drain information. When we zoom into one of these locations, and I'll add some transparency, This storm drain system that you see inside of here should be the first place where we place BMPs or best management practices. Those are the filters to prevent the dirt from going directly into the creeks. These are grassy swells to help the water dissipate back into the land. So there we go. Spatial analysis 101, some core tools that we used. Here's what we did. We took some general information about land use that had impervious surface information on there. But instead of just using that, we, got fine, we found some more fine-grained information to really help prioritize and really help plan better where to place these BMPs so they have the most effect on the community and on the environment to help prevent all that runoff going directly into the lakes and into the streams. All right. Thanks, Harry. Okay. Really interesting, and all that was done, as Harry said, with those core spatial analysis tools. So your skill to sharpen here is taking the time to educate your staff on the power of GIS and spatial analysis. And you can see how, by simply asking a few questions the next time you get a map request, you can really lead to some interesting analysis that can help make better decisions in your agency.